Okay, we're all gonna sit around here shouting go, and finally we can get started. Wonderful. I'm gonna bring you Adol Scott versus OGS MC in a PvP you may not soon forget. That's saying something, because most PvPs are incredibly forgettable, immediately so. In this case, it is Adol Scott, it is OGS MC, it is gonna be interesting, one way or the other. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you Adol Scott from Team Millennium. He is in the Red Trunks and he is playing Protoss here on the Metalopolis to the south of this particular map, versus his opponent, OGS MC, in the Blue Trunks. He is playing Protoss, and he is to the west of this particular map. Mild applause happens in the audience, we're very impressed by that. Always good. Good to see enthusiasm. So, PvP, an interesting matchup. I'm sorry, I couldn't keep a straight face. PvP, a strict matchup. What tends to happen is you get very similar build orders initially. And it comes down to whether or not one build order counters the other. And of course, down to things like micromanagement, unit composition, and usually unit numbers, in fact. You'll often find that a lot of PvPs are decided either by one player choosing to build four gateways and going with the so-called four gate attack, getting very, very aggressive early on, warping in a ton of units, actually sacrificing his economic production, building less probes, building more gates to make sure, indeed building more units in that case, to make sure that he is able to deal the killing blows with the opponent. Now, of course, if that happens to you, when you don't have four gateways to counter it with yourself, then you've got to think, well, do I build some tech? Does he have a stalk heavy force? Can I get some immortals out? Does that sound reasonable? Is there anywhere I can expand to and maybe just hold the line? And it also comes down to, well, I have sentries, so what am I going to do with the sentries? Can I cut his force in half and then divide and conquer and bleed him dry on my defenses? Is that a possibility? But one way or the other, any kind of four gateway play becomes very tense as a direct result of that. OGS MC with his first extractor complete. The assimilator. Extractor, refinery, all interchangeable. Cyber next core coming down as well for MC. Not seeing a second gas just yet. No second gas for Adult Score either. Cyber next core on the way up for him, and as you can see, it is currently a bit of a mirror build going on. Adol Scott really does not like that probe. That's become evident by the rally point. He's not going to be able to catch it with the Zealot, admittedly, but still. Now, of course, there are a couple of other ways that PvP can end up playing out, and it often ends up in the so-called War of the Worlds. It's Colossus Wars. Like, do I have more Colossus than my opponent? And are they in a better position than my opponent? In which case, yeah, you can win that way, too. Or, of course, it could be something crazy, like the old proxy two-gate idea, building two gateways outside your opponent's base and floating it with Zealots. Doesn't seem to be all that common in tournament play at the moment. Although it seems to be having an awful lot on the ladder, and no doubt it's happened with a couple of you. That was more than a couple. Adol Scott's second gateway is on his way. And what's MC up to? More gateways coming down. Will we see the third? He's certainly got the cash for it. And there's the third. Hiding that one at the back right there. That'll be fairly useful, but I don't think he'll be able to deny the scanning information. He might, however. Thought was on the way, and surely Adol Scott will check for it. There it is. Oh, so very close. MC snipes it off at just the wrong moment. So that four gateway has now been scouted by Adol Scott, and Adol Scott's response is a four gate of his own. Chrono boosting that side, Manetic score. I don't know. It takes some balls to go up against MC in a four gate versus four gate scenario. MC arguably has perhaps the best four gate in the world. Arguably. I think the only person on that level is probably Naniwa. <coughs> MC scouting across the map right now, looking for a perfect place for the pylon. And in the meantime, Adol Scott bringing out the sentry. This is, of course, what will allow him to divide and conquer. Immediately bringing down firepower. He needs to get that decision made. He's got to choose which one to fight. And there is the force field, which will prevent reinforcements, but there are no reinforcements right now. He is able to defeat that initial push, however. He's got to bring down those pylons immediately. Unless, of course, MC decides to do something else, which is not what's happening right now. However, MC cannot warp up to the top right there because he doesn't have any visibility. Adol Scott was able to block him off at the bottom of the ramp right there, and Adol Scott now pushing aggressively back with Zealots moving in right here. One Stalker sniped off. There's still a sentry there in the force. However, he's looking to try and flank around. A another wave of reinforcements could come in from MC at any moment now. Adol Scott needs to be very, very careful indeed. 
Adol Scott's actually building probes as well. He wants to try and transition out of this somehow. And the Zealot taking a little bit of damage. Down it goes. And Adol Scott trying to hold up as best he can. He does not want to allow a warp in at the top right there. But it looks like he's going to have to concede that ramp one way or the other in order to bring down OGSMC's attack. And Adol Scott has a significant army supply advantage right now. And to the point where he can actually snipe off. Unfortunately, he allowed a warp in into his base right there, as you can very clearly see. OGSMC is standing on the ramp right there and now charging into the line against Adol Scott. And there is the force field placement, and that's fantastic. That gives Adol Scott the ability to block a fight. Look at how tight this base design is. He's able to nail that down very nicely and defeat OGSMC's Zealot push. Adol Scott fighting really hard right now, trying to bring down this pylon. That's double pylon, so it's a lot of firepower he's going to spend. You've really, at this sort of high level, got to think about DPS here. How much damage per second are you throwing at your opponent versus how much damage per second are you throwing at those pylons? And Adol Scott trying to defend against this one right now, OGSMC with a quick warp, and it will be easily defeated, however, by Adol Scott. Now, Adol Scott right now has a significant economic advantage. It's 26 probes to 19. OGSMC's four gate is being defeated right here. One pylon going down. It looks like the second will as well, and OGSMC MC has been thrown back right here by Adol Scott. OGSMC, of course, will transition out. Don't worry about OGSMC. He has plenty of tricks up his sleeve, and just means that initial attack has faltered. It's been defeated by Adol Scott, which is good. It puts Adol Scott ahead. If you fail at a four gateway attack, you are pretty much always behind, simply because you've cut probes, you don't have as many as your opponent. And you can see it's 28 to 22 right now, as OGSMC chrono boosting out as many probes as possible to try and catch up to Adol Scott. Adol Scott, in the meantime, looking for an opportunity. He doesn't find one right now. Army supply is in favor of Adol Scott. He could go in for an attack. However, with a couple of sentries there, it could be a little bit dangerous. In the meantime, he's decided he's going to expand. So, looks like we're actually going to get a PvP that goes on for longer than eight minutes, and I think everyone could be thankful about that. Except if you hate PvP, in which case, well, can't help you. Plus one upgrade right here for the Forge and for those ground units. That will give him the edge, no doubt about that. OGSMC now with a robotics facility coming out, perhaps looking to get his way through to Colossi, but he is one base behind. OGSMC showing initially no signs of expanding right there. And to be honest, that could be a little bit dangerous, but he hasn't been mining at the rate that you would expect. Because he got probes, these are going to last him a little bit longer, but he will need to expand shortly, otherwise Adel Scott will be even further ahead than he already is in terms of his economy. Adel Scott with, once again, a significant army supply advantage. He's sitting right now on 10 Stalkers, and he's also got three Zealots and a Sentry versus his opponent's army, which is smaller. Let's just put it that way. I've got Pylon down the bottom there to enable him to get some warp ins and a quick boost on there. Are we going to see a timing push right here by Adel Scott with this? It doesn't really matter, honestly. You'll notice that OGSMC doesn't have a forge, so whether or not that's time doesn't make a blind bit of difference. Although attacking before OGSMC is able to put together a very large army would be wise. And also Adel Scott now with a blink. OGSMC is definitely fighting from behind here. You can see it in the army supply, you can see it in the worker supply, more importantly. A 10 worker lead for Adol Scott and now has two Nexuses to push those out from. Is it Nexus or is it Nexi? I don't think Nexi is a real word and it sounds dumb anyway, so let's not go with that. We've got a blink coming right here from Adol Scott and that plus one upgrade is done. Not willing to go in just yet. A little bit of fire coming on that observer and OGSMC spots the uh, Twilight Council. He also spots the gateway. He knows the Twilight Council is doing something. It was chrono boosted. So he has to assume Blink Stalkers, considering the size of the Stalker count of Adol Scott. The question is, what will he do to avoid that? It's going to be difficult for OGSMC to actually deal with this. And, of course, his only real choice is to try and pump out some Immortals, which is what he's doing right now. He has Chrono Boost, he's not using it, and he's picking up a Twilight Council. Adol Scott still has a good advantage here. He's got a massive unit count way ahead of what OGSMC's got, and he's got that plus one upgrade, which OGSMC definitely does not have. That's the danger of using a four gateway strategy, folks. If it fails, and it's very rare that OGSMC's four gate fails, then you end up way behind. Now, if Adol Scott goes in now, unless there's some miracle, OGSMC will concede this game, and he's going for it right now, as you can very clearly see. There is the force field divide, but it doesn't matter because of Blink. Adel Scott with an initial bit of inconclusive pot shotting going on right here. Waiting for those to wear off, and there we go. Adel Scott charging into the line right now. There are, however, two Immortals now in the mix. That's going to make things a little bit trickier. 
Alaskar just standing behind a wall of force fields right now. Those zealots are actually blocked off quite nicely by OGSMC. However, he is being torn apart right here. And there's the blink. He's going for the kill right here. Trying to grab the throat and down goes the immortal as well. OGSMC pulling everything he can off that line, which is really not an awful lot. Adelscott melting the remainder of OGSMC's forces. GG! Adel Scott takes the first game against the one and only OGS MC in his best of three series.